So good afternoon and welcome. My name is Rob Romanowski. I'm the Director of Sales Operations for 3HTI. And as you may know, every Thursday at noon, we put on a uh, webinar that showcases a uh, extension or a capability within Creo CAD software. So we're really excited about this because we've been running these webinars since March of this year. And every week we continue to get a good turnout of people. We're getting positive feedback from people saying they love the webinars. Um, they're informative, they're learning stuff. So that's exactly what we want to do is we want to provide value. So today we're going to look at um, the interactive surface design extension that's available with Creo. Paul Dye um, from PTC is going to lead us today. He's going to have a presentation as well as a demonstration of what's called also called ISDX. Um, and this is he's also going to review a contrast to a capability that is already in your license of Creo that's called Freestyle, which allows you to take a primitive shape and stretch and pull it to create an idea. Now, there's no parametric intelligence behind it when you do that, but that's the beauty of it is it allows you to create these complex surfaces to, to create ideas. And then once you get the idea you want, you can then just, um, add the parametric intelligence behind it. And then there's the interactive surface design extension, which allows for greater detail for parts. And Paul will explain the differences between the two. So without further ado, Paul, you have the con. Thrill us with your knowledge, my friend. All right, perfect. And Rob, you can confirm that you can see my screen here, my voice all good? I can. All right, awesome. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me on. Always happy to be on to support these calls. And thank you everybody that's here live on the call. Obviously very welcome to have you here. And also hello to anyone that might be viewing this after the fact, right? This is some awesome capabilities that we're gonna be going over today. And something that if you work in the area of surfacing in the slightest, right? This is going to be something that you have to know about. This is something that we have a lot of Creo users don't know exists. And the ones that do know that exist has helped them save so much time, so much energy, and it has really enabled them to build out some amazing products. So that's something I'm gonna go through and show exactly how it works. I'm gonna to talk to all the capabilities around it and really lay the foundation for exactly where this falls within the scope of Creo Parametric as well. And also like Rob mentioned, kind of how it compares and contrasts with some of the other servicing tools that we have within the context of Creo. This really kind of fits into a specific niche that we see um, plays a role in many different designers' day-to-day -day tasks. So I'll go ahead and explain all of this. Uh, again, if you have any questions throughout this, or if you have anything that you want me to explain any more in detail, feel free to drop that in the q and I'll be more than happy to do so. And if there's anything that I can't even hit on today throughout the course of the demonstration, I have a pretty extensive network of engineers that we can always reach out to and get answers to anything that you're interested in. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started in. And first thing I like to cover is first and foremost, the challenges that we typically see out in the industry, especially whenever it comes to service modeling. And in general, this is something that typically requires a pretty high degree of skill and expertise to be able to do. It normally requires the user to have an in-depth knowledge of how to build out complex curves and do everything that's really needed to get to those high quality services. And what we've seen is that users really struggle to create that kind of surface geometry. Whenever you're just working with your standard types of parametric surfacing techniques, things like parameters, constraints that you have to lay out to even get started, it really limits the amount of flexibility and creativity that you can have throughout that process. You see a lot of companies tend to rely on third-party applications to do things like their conceptual design and exploring new ideas because it's normally difficult to do whenever you still want to have that level of parametric control. And that's really what you need need throughout that process is you need to be able to have that level of control but at the same time be able to create and evaluate more designs throughout your conceptual phase right maybe a typical user if you're just using your standard techniques you might only be able to evaluate three different designs during the concept phase right and that's basically because it's hard to build from a concept sketch you know, reverse engineer physical prototypes and on top of all that you need to be able to take into account styling aesthetics at the end of the day, you need a clean design that is going to appeal to a customer or just be able to be useful out in industry. So these are all things that we like to 
say that we design around here within the context of our interactive surface design extension. And it's kind of a mouthful there, but you might refer, you might hear me refer to it as ISDX throughout this process. But with ISDX, what we're doing is we're combining both freeform and technical servicing into a single intuitive environment where we're putting really the focus back on to design aesthetics rather than just worrying about constraints and parameters all the time. And that's something that I actually want to lay out here first and foremost, the context of where this tool works before we even talk to the capabilities and show what that looks like in Creo. So like Rob mentioned, what we have in in our freestyle tool is more of a freeform style modeling tool. That's a separate tool that we have in just the base of Creo for taking a primitive shape and molding the model almost like a ball of clay. And with that, you're not working around really any type of parametric features. You're not worried about what's the radius, what's the diameter, what's the length, none of that, right? You're just kind of looking to get to an overall shape. So that's almost what you would have on one hand, on one side of the equation. And uh, what you have on the other, and so other side of the equation would be more into your parametric modeling techniques, right? So you wanna have a lot of control. You wanna lay out the dimensions, the surfaces, everything to have very strict control over exactly where something needs to fit, what something needs to be, right? So what the ISDX tool is, looks to kind of play in between those two areas, right? So still getting the look and the feel and the creativity that you get from more of that freeform modeling, but at the same time, include in all of the control that you get from your standard parametric techniques and put it really all into one environment. And that's the environment that we're working with here in ISTX. It's been designed to maximize the efficiency and the productivity that you're using and working with throughout that surfacing process as a very intuitive user interface uh, you'll go through and I'll actually show you what this looks like. You're a lot of times going to be working in a four window display to help you build out features from multiple different angles, right? That's oftentimes what you need to do whenever you're working with more complex geometry. We're working in the X, the Y, the Z. Well, we make it very, very easy to make those changes from any perspective. We can directly edit any of that geometry. Um, in most cases, what we'll do is start by creating what's called freeform curves. ISTX makes curve creation very straightforward. We have a lot of enhanced capabilities for curve creation, isolating curves, curves on surface, curve from surface, projection onto another surface, lots of different ways for getting those curves built out. And not only building them out, but analyzing the curves to make sure that they're tangent, curvature, or even acceleration continuous. Whenever you're building out high quality surfaces, the quality of those curves is gonna be just as important. So we have a lot of control in that aspect of the process. And then from that point, we have really the creation and editing of the surfaces from those curves, both very flexible and interactive, right? Utilizing boundary, loft, blend surfaces. We have smart curve and surface con connections for making sure that everything that we build out is really gonna transition how we need to. It's gonna be very aesthetically pleasing and very smooth at the same time. Uh, one of the big things that we want users to be able to do is create this sort of freeform geometry at any point throughout the design. And one of the reasons we're able to do that is because it's still all tied in with our standard Creo parametric features, right? It means that any of the changes that we make to our services are gonna update real time, any of the design or analysis features that we build from them and vice versa. If any of the parametric features that you use to find the services update, everything can be fully associative. All of your services and curves can all update real time as well. You're able to work with either 2D or 3D imported geometry within this process as well. A lot of times we see users working in the concept design phase starting from a few sketches. So we're able to bring those in and use that as the base for the design. But around that as well, we could also work directly from a 3D point cloud or faceted geometry also makes it very easy to reverse engineer curves and services that may have been started outside of Creo and still be able to bring those in. Now, one of the main questions that we typically get in this process is who specifically is ISDX or the Interactive Surface Design Extension designed for, right? Well, the I would say to start, the first main big group that you have is your concept and industrial engineers, really anyone who works with early stage design, laying out the foundation for the model and building that into more of the detailed design. But really this is for anyone working in Creo, right? You have your everyday engineer or designer. They might need a clean cosmetic shape on the outside of their model, right? If there's anything that wouldn't be 
requiring just standard lines or circles, right? Anything that needs to be in between there, ISDX is very useful on top of whatever normal types of parametric tools that you're used to using. So this is very easy to work with. And I'm gonna go through and show an example of what this might look like in that Creo parametric process. I'll go through and show a little bit of that workflow. And again, if you have any questions or if you have anything that you want me to explain a little bit more in depth to around that process, feel free to drop that in the Q&A. But with that, I'll go ahead and switch over here into our Creo environment. Right, and we can go ahead and get started here for our demonstration of the interactive surface design extension or ISDX. In my case, what I'm going to be using is a data set that we have from one of our customers, Royal Enfield. Specifically here, we're going to be working up here on the handguard assembly. Let's go ahead and get that opened up here. And what we have right now is the main metal bar that provides the structure. And what we wanna build out is a plastic covering that's gonna go around that bar. And so what this may have started out with was a sketch that was built up initially by one of our industrial designers. And what I wanna do is bring in that 2D concept sketch and look at it in the context of my 3D design environment. This is a very typical workflow that we tend to see designers working from the concept phase use or they're taking in those initial sketches and using them as the foundation for creating these 3D features here in Creo. So um, we can go ahead also and bring in another sketch. We'll use these as the framework working either from the front or from the top down from the side. And like you're seeing us do here with any of these sketches, we're able to rotate them, we're able to scale things. We're even able to change the transparency and the color of the image if we'd like to, just to align it well with some of the hard geometry that we've started out with here and what we want to build into. All right, once we have those images in, we're ready to go ahead here and start to create some services. Uh, what I have here also is a curve laid out for that outer beam. So even if we hide that beam, we're still able to tie our services back to any of that geometry as well. All right, now if we want to get started into the interactive surface design extension, what we would simply do is select the style tool up here on our engineering ribbon from the services tab, and we can start to go through and build out some curves here on the model. Now curves are really the foundation for any of the surfaces that we're going to be building out in the style tool. And as you can see here, it's very easy to go through, build those out here in the model. And we can simply just define that better as we go along at any point. Another thing we can do at any point here is do a curvature analysis where we can see how smooth those curves that we built are, especially at any points that we might have transitions between curves, we can really start to smooth those out. And we can go ahead back into that curve. And what I can actually do here is work in a multi-view approach, just allows us to see every change that I'm making from multiple orientations at once. And what we can do is change the size of each of those views. We really want to focus in on the one that we're designing with, but still get context from the other views while I'm making those changes. That's something that we could lay out. And this is very important when we're working in 3D space. As I'm going through and moving a curve in one direction, well, what's that doing in the Y or the Z direction? This makes that process a lot easier, a lot easier to visualize that as we're working through the model here. All right, so I'm just going through in each of those views, make sure that my curve is aligning well with those 2D sketches that I started with, adding in any points in as we see fit. And now we can go ahead and do the same sort of thing down here at the bottom. And what you'll notice is I can really lay these curves out as precisely or as loosely as I'd like to, but we're able to define that level of detail as we move along here. And even have the curvature analysis available at any point or at any point as well, switch back into our multi-view to really get better context into the changes that we're making. While we're in that edit curve, we can go ahead and add in more points very quickly. And while I'm moving those points around, we can look at the curvature plot to make sure that every change that we're making is doing what we want. If it's not, we can go back into any of those views, make whatever changes that we need to, but you're much less likely to have issues pop up unexpectedly later on. All right, this is looking pretty good. We'll go ahead back here. And once we have these curves laid out how we'd like to, what I'm going to do is activate our right, our right plane and create our first planar curve on it using three different reference points from the curves that we already have created here. So we'll start by selecting the curve that we have up at the top, move that down to the middle and then finish up down at the bottom. All right, and once we have that one good to go, we'll, fit, we'll place a few more along here. In this case, we'll use the radial planar option 
essentially means that I'll select a point on one of those curves and then the plane that's created will be normal to the profile sketch that we selected. It'll intersect those other curves as well. You can see here, you can use the curve edit option to move that plane around at any point normal along the curve as well. All right, we'll do the same sort of thing with a 3D curve using that radial planar option as well. Place that over here on the right hand side. And with all of our curves laid out properly, we can go ahead and create our first surface. Now to do that, we'll start by selecting the curves that go along the boundary of that surface. We can also select the controlling curves that we have in the middle there as well. And just like that, we're done with the front surface. We're good to move on to the top section of our model here. Now the first thing that we need to do is add in two more 3D free curves along the existing curves that we have on this. This is just going to make sure that the, the services that we add in here are going to transition well into the services that we already have built out. And with these now laid out, we'll simply just select the four bounding curves that we have along the outside region of the area that we want to place that curve in. Go ahead and do the same thing over here on the right hand side of the model as well. And now that the surfaces are good to go, we can focus in here on the middle section. And it's going to be a fairly similar process to the very first surface that we created. First thing that we're going to do is add in a controlling curve here in the middle of the region where we want to place the surface. The main difference is now I want to be able to control the tangency at the endpoints here. So you can see I have multiple different options in this sense, whether we want it to be acceleration continuous, uh, curvature continuous, or tangent. This is essentially just different levels of complexity that you can build into, but really you as the user are going to have complete control over exactly what level of detail that you want to get to with any of those options. And looking at that, it looks pretty good. We can check back in on our multi view as well. We can pretty clearly see here that we need to move the curve forward to properly align with that sketch that we started with. In order to do that, we can add in a couple of points just to give us a bit more control over that curve. Also use the bottom view here just to make sure that everything is positioned correctly. And I think that curve is looking pretty good. So we can move forward here and create these middle surfaces now. We'll start by getting the smaller half here using the bounding curves along the outside. All right, and now with this larger section, I actually want this to be indented a little bit. So let's go ahead and add in one last controlling curve here. And again, we can just make sure that it's going to be tangent to the surface that we just created there as well. Make sure that we lay that out here. We can also pull that curve in just a bit wherever we want it to be indented. Do that down here at the bottom. Just add in a point to do that. So as you can see, it's very fast and easy to make those type of changes on the fly. And go ahead and make that last surface up here at the top. And while we're defining that, we can define the transition into those other surfaces at any point. Add in any of that detail. Also add in that controlling curve that we have in the middle. And we're all good to go up at the top. All right, so now we'll go ahead and do the same thing down here at the bottom and repeat the process that we went through up at the top. Go ahead and add in that first curve over on the left-hand side. Do the same thing over on the right. And with those curves, now we can go through and place our two surfaces and on either side. And what you're doing here is creating four-sided surfaces, but you could do more than just four sides if you wanted to. You could just as easily build these out as lofted surfaces, swept surfaces. There's a lot of different options that we have at our disposal at any point while we're working. It's really a matter of what gives you the best way of getting there. And now we're going to come through here and finish up the center section. And again, that quick menuing that we're working with throughout this as well is very efficient for defining tangency and curvature while you're working. It's meant to be very fast. It's really one of the main points throughout all the different tools that we have here in ISDX, whether it be the multi-section view, the quick menuing, right? We really created a tool in ISDX that allows you to build out some fairly complex geometry, but doing it in a way that takes less mouse clicks, takes less hassle to build things out, and at the same time still have a lot of control throughout that process that we wouldn't have otherwise. All right, so here, just making sure that that center curve is aligning well with the initial sketch that we started with. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead now and fill in the first area down on the bottom with the new surface. Do that pretty similar to how we did with the other two surfaces by just simply selecting on the four, the four curves along the outside. 
Also make sure that the tangency is in the correct direction with any of those. And last thing we'll do is fill in that top section here. Same thing, we want to have that indented a little bit like we did up at the top. Just make sure that the curve that we're going to build out here is tangent, wherever it's going to connect back in with that bottom surface. And we'll add in another point to control that curve just a bit. So quick and easy to get that built out. And with that defined, we can grab the four curves along the outside edge here. Make sure that tangency is good with each of those. So again, fairly standard process that we work with there. Very easy to get used to. And we'll add in that last controlling surface or curve that we have in the middle, and we're good to go. So we really have most of the surfaces that we wanted to build out there, right? So now that we have those built out, what we can do is what's called reflection analysis to see exactly how well things transition. We're using what looks like kind of zebra shapes here to see some of those reflective properties of the surfaces. We're gaining insight onto the quality of the surfaces that we're building out. Also looking to see if there's any issues with any of the surfaces. We'd be able to see that very clearly. And now we really have the base for my design. Right, we no longer need to see those images that we started with, so we can go ahead and change the view state for those. So we'll go ahead and get rid of those. And right now, the surfaces that we built out are actually all separate surfaces within that one style feature. So what we would want to do now is merge those surfaces together into what we call quilts. If you haven't worked around quilts before, they're essentially just a grouping of one or more different surfaces that we have in Creo. And once we have them together, we can see that we have a bit of extra material that overlaps over some of the hard geometry that we might have in the model. So what we'll do is go ahead and do an extruding cut to remove anything that might be existing in those areas. And now that we essentially have everything laid out where we want, we can go ahead and now take this forward and round off some of those harder transitions that we have here in the model. And that's very simple to do here. All right, from what we need to do now is remove the area where the handguard is going to attach back in to that metal support bar. We have a surface laid out here that defines the slot where that bar needs to be located. So we can just go ahead and use our merge tool to remove any of that area, essentially just subtracting the slot area from our new surface. All right, we can go ahead and keep moving on from there. There's also another area over on the side here where the cover is going to attach back in with the rest of the assembly. So we can go ahead and remove material from that section as well. And same as before, what we can do is use some rounds to smooth out the hard edges that we have between some of those surfaces. And the rounding functionality that you have in Creo is very robust, works in very well with what we do here in our interactive surface design extension. In this case, maybe you want to do a chordal round on the outside edge of our front surface. And then on the inner edge, we might just want to do a constant radius. All right, and once that's all laid out, what we could do then is thicken this part which is going to in turn turn this into a solid model. And there we go. We have our model that we can take forward, we can work around. And really what's powerful from this point is the full associativity that we have from our surfaces to the rest of our parametric features. What that really means is that if any of the hard geometry that we have here in our surface changes, right? Maybe the inner radius that we have on that curve needs to be decreased, or well, if we make that change, everything updates. Like you can see, the surfaces update, all your features update, Everything that we create in ISTX is seamlessly connected with anything else that we do in Creo going forward. All right, so that's the interactive surface design extension. Again, built out to create that type of surface geometry very quickly and have full control over the process throughout any stage. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to cover from a workflow perspective. Again, tons of functionality that I don't have, you know, full time to go through and explain to full level of depth, but tons of different areas that we have to build out within the interactive service design extension, and really a ton of different benefits that we get from working with this. First thing that we typically see people out in the industry using this tool is first and foremost, reduce time to market. That's just from the increased productivity and really the efficiency at which you can work, right? Less time that you waste trying to recreate concept geometry whenever you wanna move more into the detailed design portion of that process or designing to realize price premium, you're not only creating precise manufacturable geometry, it's at the same time gonna be high quality, aesthetically pleasing products that are gonna be much more easily differentiated out in the market. You're reducing product development costs, reduce cycle times. Again, it's less reliance on 
physical prototypes to define the styling for a product, you can build out more of a virtual prototype here that you can share off with people as well. And finally, at the end of the day, increase uh, product quality and innovation. You're able to evaluate more design options, just be more creative throughout the process, and at the end of the day, still end up with the best model possible. And that really covers everything that I wanted to touch on today. It's a very powerful tool and anyone that's working with any type of servicing within the context of Creo, this is definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to check out and potentially add into your process. All right, and with that, I can pass it over to you, Rob. Yeah, absolutely, Paul. I mean, it saves a ton of time and our clients that are using uh, ISDX are seeing the savings and the return on the investment. So. Like Paul mentioned, if you want to see a more detailed demo uh, specifically to your needs, just, you know, we could set that up. All you have to do is reply to the email that, uh, that I sent out as an invitation for this webinar. If you reply to that, it comes to me and then I can, you know, answer any questions that you have or get you set up on a uh, more specific demo so you can see more. Or you can email us at info at 3hti.com. So, Paul, thank you very much. Great job as always. And that's going to end our webinar for today. So keep on the lookout for our webinar for next week. And uh, maybe we'll see you then. Thanks, everyone.